and this one is actually uh, a little more yeah, funky. Got all the uh, it got, did, um, the details. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> through something that's called warm fermentation. It's basically a spontaneous uh, fermentation process. We asked him because we're so good friends with him. We asked him this time if he wanted to do like an experiment, which was take a lot of cherries, put them in a plastic bag, seal it up, throw it on the patio. That's what I can taste. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. like tasting fruity. Yeah. Uh, so um, you know, throw them on the patio in the sun and just like see what happens, more or less. And it turned out really well. Um, personally, I feel like it has it's a soft cup, juicy. Well, I appreciate you doing this, I think. It's very cool of you. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's always strange, uh, I guess, coming to a place and then asking somebody to do this thing because it's like asking them to have a conversation conversation with me publicly is not always like a small ask of somebody, you know? It's, so, I, I'm happy to do it. And, you know, um, we have a bit of background and history together, too. And it's like when we talked over the phone and we were doing the Proco thing, it's like, Seem like a super awesome guy. And, yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. For sure. Uh, my pleasure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess I guess the reason that I want to talk to you specifically is because, like, I, I mentioned in this podcast before that, like, the point of it is not to talk about technique. It's not to talk about like learning anatomy or learning how to do perspective or painting or anything. It's more specifically about like the why to do art in the first place. Yeah. You know, it's like why would somebody focus all their time on doing something that is very difficult and very like it's not obvious like. Um, like the amount of time it takes to become good at art is a lot, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort and pain essentially. And, um, you know, that, uh, like, again, I, I'm, I'm always curious about why people dedicate their lives to it, you know? Yeah, totally. And, uh, as a culture, why we value it so much. And, yeah. But, uh, uh, so I guess it's my why. Yeah. Okay. It's funny because I find that it's, um, I guess it, 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 it moves and changes too right. throughout, throughout my journey. Um, but I think it started super young, right. um, like fascination with things that, you know, different worlds, different stories, but yeah. like, I, I always had like a pretty strong imagination, I would say. Yeah. Like as a kid, I would always like make stories about like you know they had like little ladybug or something. I would, I would right. imagining like whole things for it. Um, because I think I think that that's still still my why, which is, um, I think I've I've become a bit more maybe practical about it. Right. Whereas like, I think as a kid it was very it's like a, it's like a playground. Yeah. You know, I can I can explore all of these imaginary worlds but i think in the process of drawing it and, and thinking about it i'm also exploring myself right it's like a self-explanatory uh, or self-exploratory process of seeing different sides of, of myself yeah. in, the, in it right um and um and you know, now I think it's coming into, you know, how is it that we can do that meaningfully? Yeah. If that makes sense. So like telling yeah. an important story or or doing something that, you know, like means something to, to you. Right. And if it means something to you, it, it will most likely mean something to other people. Absolutely. Finding something that resonates. And Yeah, definitely. Well, I, the thing I've been telling a lot of people is like, I, I you know, I've been traveling for the past three years just living in different cities and trying to do a bunch of road trips and riding my bike a lot and uh and most recently doing this whole van thing I, obviously i don't have the van now here, here in an apartment in copenhagen but it's like the thing that i've been telling people is that traveling this much has affirmed my belief that a god exists and i'm not even really sure what i mean when i say that but it's like surreal to me that as human beings we can assign value to things that are objectively just protons and electrons you know, things that are objectively just nothing right mm -hmm. it's like iron or you know oil on a, oil and cotton can be this beautiful painting or you know just random sounds can be this beautiful song and as humans we assign meaning to these things and um it's i think it's an incredibly beautiful thing when you look at something like digitally digitally painting objectively like you're moving your hand 
you know, and just putting down strokes of color and value. And over the course of a few hours or a few months or a few days or something, it ends up being this image that represents your values and who you are, you know. And again, it's such a strange thing that we're able to do that as human beings. And um, I think it's like, uh, specifically for you, it's like you've been able to, um, you're telling stories with the images that you create. And it's cool to see that the way you've done it, you've been able to also make that your living. You've been able to make that the thing that supports you and inspires people. And, you know, again, it's like a, um, part of the reason why I can say I believe in God is because I would assume that like if if I were to be an alien just coming and looking at humans, I would assume that everyone would just be murdering each other for their food or something, you know. But the fact that there can be people that make images for a living is is incredibly powerful and inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I I feel extremely fortunate and happy that I'm able and this worked out to and I see it as a right. uh, responsibility too, right? Where it's like now that this has kind of opened up and I get get to do this. Yeah. Um, then there's also because it is like, I don't know, like uh, coming back to the storytelling too, which I think is like art is like an expression of the human soul, right? Yeah. It doesn't need necessarily to be concrete. It can be abstract or it, it, it comes but all all back to uh, I had a teacher called Lawrence Marvid back in school and he would always he would say this thing that always like burned in me he said like what's the most important part in the picture yeah. and we were like we were like students we were like um and then we we're like we we're like that it looks good or yeah. you know yeah, like yeah, something yeah. like that and it's like no it's, it's it's how it makes you feel yeah yeah and i think that's exactly exactly right um so uh, i think that you know like now like it is to find something that is meaningful but also something that tells a story about you know me mm -hmm. as a human or us right. as, a, as humans and i agree i think with with uh, god or whatever word you want to put on on this thing that we can't explain um but people have tried to I mean, yeah, 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 yeah you can call it the universe whatever word yeah. you want to use for it it's 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 more of a, it's, it's a phenomenon or like a I can't explain it. I, should, yeah, yeah, I yeah. shouldn't start to explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna call it it. Right. Um but yeah, I, I think definitely and I think that we are all kind of tied together and absolutely and we have uh we have different things that we're here to um bring out if that makes sense. Absolutely. And and we all have different qualities and 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 things to offer. And it's not like one thing is better than the other. It's like and I think that's, I don't know, like the whole idea of like everybody has inherent value. I think it's, it's, it, it's true. Absolutely. I think that's what, where we are in this day and age too, in our yeah. civilization. And Absolutely. It's, but it's a beautiful thing that it has happened. And it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Just again, yeah. chimpanzees going crazy yeah. at each other. Well, but again, you would expect, I mean, just, you know, it's strange for me going to, you know, hundreds of different cities and being, I guess, walking past thousands of people and just seeing that everyone that I pass is their own individual person living their own independent life of me and I'll probably never see them again and but there's a reality where I interact with that person and we have a very meaningful relationship together meaningful friendship or you know or just a meaningful conversation and yeah. to see that and go around it's like wow there's like all this meaning and beauty in the world that you know it's the thing I the thing I've been repeating to myself is like when I get sad or depressed it's not the world fault at all it's like the thing that's ever only ever limiting me is not the lack of meaning in the world it's my ability to see it you know and mm -hmm. i found that as i've expanded my vision by traveling so much and meeting so many people i've been able to see a lot more meaning in the world I've been able to live a lot more of like a less resentful life you know yeah, yeah. um and I, I would i would equate that as my version of like walking with god you know walking with you know in it it's it's strange to, to say that specifically because yeah. I've been a version of an atheist or like, you know, not somebody who would be a spiritual person. And then to talk like um, matter of fact about God existing is, is very like, I can't say it any other way, essentially, you know. Yeah. Uh, very, I get it. Very bizarre. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, I think it's also, it's part of your journey too, where 
and I relate very much to it. I think, um, and I think it's like an individual's journey too, but it is that also like, you know, like when, when I very much think that there is something yeah. that ties all together. Right. Um, and, um, and I think it also like is that sort of like if you're in your journey right now, and I, I've been at that point too, where I was extremely on a very low point, uh, okay. where it's, you know, it's like nothing matters, nothing, yeah. you know, like that very nihilistic yeah. sort of thinking. Absolutely. But I, I didn't know it was like a nihilistic sort of thinking, yeah. but, but you, you learn that later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, like there's, there comes a point where you get very, very, very low right. and, um, and just, and, and, you know, like some, I don't know what happens, something takes, or you yeah. kind of connect to something or you see a new part of yourself, Yeah. but you also, I don't know, for me, it was like, I started questioning, like, what if it did matter? What yeah. if everything I, I did actually mattered? Right. Um, and that can change everything. You know? Absolutely. It's well, like the smallest thing can make a big impact. Absolutely. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but no. I think it's uh, like, I'm reading Milton's Paradise Lost right now, and in it, the idea of Satan is a very logical character. It's like, a, um, you know, he didn't know that God was all powerful. He was just trying to be the best he could. His ambition wrong. Is all this stuff wrong? Like, you know, it's like, is it wrong to hurt, you know, to, to win? You know, it's like things that are very, logical you know, they, they make sense logically you know? yeah. and I think um, the way that I've been approaching it now is like um, like it's it's never about like a, a direct value judgment it's, it's always about like um, it's never about being better than other people it's never about like earning more money or being more famous or getting more likes on Instagram or anything it's always about like telling the truth and you know trying your best yeah. and um, I feel like uh, when in my life I've tried to explain things uh, logically instead of uh, with love and compassion, that's been the moments in my life that I've really suffered the most, you know, that have been, again, the most depressed and the most sad. And, um, when I've kind of like embraced the paths that are put in front of me by the universe, I've lived a lot more me of a meaningful and uh, and happy life you know yeah and it's again it's a very strange thing to observe yeah i i, I think too that there's um um it's it's like for example when we're sitting sitting and talking right yeah. um it's it's um it's like you know like you open up you're like you go into that sort of space that you're, you're talking from the feeling standpoint right and that takes bravery too because you know you're you're opening up and you're like you're being vulnerable like that. So I'm gonna show you a side of me. Right. And then depending on how that gets you know responded by from the other person, very much a, like sh depend like it, it kind of like it shoot like it depends like where the where can this go. Yeah right? absolutely so there's there's that sort of power in the vulnerability and to be brave and to do that. Right. So I think people often have straight away from that because they try to open up and be vulnerable about what they feel or think and, right. and then somebody is going to shut them down and, Absolutely. and then you're like oh i don't i don't want to do that again you yeah know? and then you just you, you stray a little bit away but i think it comes all the way back from childhood Absolutely. And, and 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 that's what i love about it too with when we're talking about meaning is like everything is just interconnected like Absolutely. You, you think that you can like you can what's it called like Everything is just right here and right now in this little pocket of time, but we just don't see like no. how it's all. It's yeah, all yeah, yeah. It's like my anyone's anxieties can be, you know, them like they were bullied when they were kids or something when they were five, and that's coming up when they're forty-five or something, you know, four years later. You know, it's like um, people are extremely complicated. Yeah. Like, very, yeah. very strange and complicated. And I think it's uh, like um, as I look at myself it's i'm like a series of experiences that um come together to make me and um I, I read this quote in the bible and it was uh there goes i but for the grace of god which essentially means that the only thing separating you between that homeless person you walk by on the street is just a series of um 
circumstances or events that happen to them and not you, you know? And when you look at them, the wrong thing to do is look at them and be like, oh, that person is disgusting. That person is wrong. It's just, um, they were they were dealt a different hand, you know? Yeah. And very easily, that could have been us. That could have been you. And, um, and when I look at things that way, it's it's hard to look at my life and not be thankful for everything that I have, you know? It's like I have my health. I have my, you know, you know I can travel. I can, you know, um, I have so many things to be thankful for. Yeah. Every time I lose sight of that, um, I think that that's the logical side I was talking about. It's like, oh, of course I should have more money. Of course I should be more famous. Of course I should, you know, be doing all this stuff. Yeah. We all, we all do. I think that uh, there's that sort of uh, old truth too, right? Where it's like, we even have uh, in the English uh, vocabulary language, right? like being smart, like being too smart for your own good. Yeah. It's yeah. that sort of thing where you're, your rational side is so strong right. that you forget about the other parts. Absolutely. You know? yeah. and, and it can really send you in some really bad places. Bad place. yeah. <laughs> um, Absolutely. And it's such a powerful tool, our brain. Right. And our brains. Um, but there is uh, there's so much underneath that we have no fucking clue about. It's really fucking weird, man. <laughs> it's like a, I don't the, the, the thing I've been thinking about is just how big the world is. It's like Somewhere in the galaxy, in the universe right now, there's a supernova happening. And there, there's somebody, you know, maybe in Syria being executed. And then there's somebody in Afghanistan that's worried about, you know, obviously everything happening there. And then there's somebody at Disneyland riding Space Mountain. You know? <laughs> it's all happening all at once. And yeah. it's like, what do you what do you do about that existentially? It's like, I have no idea. It's like, it's nothing you know, to do. And it's like, and the thing to do actually is to like sit around and paint pictures, to sit yeah. around and make music, to sit around and dance, to sit around and have these kind of conversations. That's the, that's the answer to you know, defining the meaning. It's like, it's like, in the past, I've been the kind of person that's like felt guilty about like, oh, I, I should be in the Peace Corps. I should be donating all my time to feed the hungry or, you know, solve malaria or something. And in reality, that would, that might be an ego thing of me just trying to be somebody who's seen as a good person rather than doing the thing that I, that would actually help people the most, you know, like kind of talking yourself into irrelevance, you know, talking yeah. yourself into. I, I get what, yeah. I think it's also like, um, often we, like we want to change the world for the better, yeah. right? We want to, and I think that there's also like, you know, we want to help people, but it's always like, you know, there's always the two sides, right? And often there's more, but there's like, there's the same thing of like you have to help people if you can, but you also have to help yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the question was like, you know, like by volunteering and, and doing that, like, would you be helping yourself in the process too? Yeah. Or would it be just, you know, like, or you know, and it's good to ask that sort of those sort of sort of questions, you know. I think with uh with the art for me, I mean, I don't think I had much the choice yeah i didn't do very well in school yeah, yeah, yeah me too yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't do very well in school uh, i was drawing most of the time right. um I, I think i think i think it like the drawing had is transitioning like in, in meaning in in how it can help yeah. um over the years where it's like Okay, this is about to get personal, but let's let's go there. Yeah. You open up, I open up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I think as a kid, where it's like, it becomes this place where I have a lot. I had a lot of things going on as a child with uh, a brother who uh, was born with something called paravili, which is an extremely uh, rare um, condition uh, that. Uh, you know, makes set, makes them different than other people. And uh, sometimes when, when you know, growing up as a, as a child, that would kind of become overwhelming and, yeah. and or things like that, then drawing would be a place where I could go to. Yeah. It would be my own little, uh, little place where, you know, I could escape from reality, essentially. Yeah. Even just for a while, but it would to be to, to cope, and maybe not cope, but to 
process things or to get a little break so I could come back to it and be in it again, you know, so it doesn't become overwhelming. And um, and I think it still is. It's just sort of a little break sometimes when it's when it's good. I think I, you know it's both the professional side, but there's also when I do it for me. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know whether whether or not you know you want to have it as a job, like that's the that's the core. Absolutely. Right? It's like yeah. it's that sort of a place you can go. It's like therapy. Absolutely. And self exploration. Um, and, uh, I'm trying to still hold on to that, Yeah, you know, and then also grow up, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have a family. Yeah, you know, it, things and, exactly. Yeah. But also, um, I, like, uh, I was reading about the archetypes, yeah. uh, if you know those. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in Jungian psychology, they, they talk about the different archetypes and I, um, I read about several and I was like uh, at that point in time I was just working and I was kind of like isolating myself and I was uh, depressed too and yeah. a really hard hard, hard, hard state and, and I read like that one of the archetypes was like one of the one of the ways to kind of like to go out basically it says that there are two shadow sides yeah an inflated uh, ego one and a deflated mm -hmm. ego one. Yeah. And anyway, what, for with that archetype, um, sh sharing the knowledge and kind of going out and, sh and doing that was one of the ways. So I put extra emphasis on like, okay, how can I keep doing this and giving back of, you know, what it is that I've learned from, you know, going to this sort of like drawing place, you yeah. know, uh, and then how can... And I think that maybe that's where some of the meaning is now too, from where I am now. It's like, how can I help giving the tools that I've learned so far Absolutely. to others so they can be like, you know, like they have a rich inner life and they want to be like, you know, like, hey, this is what's going on inside of me. You know, for me, I hope that that's where I can take, you know, some of my art moving forward. Of course, I'm going to be a commercial artist for some time still where I draw right. things that are you know, for other people. Yeah. But uh, for me, as a child, I've often pushed my needs to the side right. because, you know, living with a person who has special needs, yeah. um, you know, like you sometimes need to. It's just the reality of it. Absolutely. And then as you grow up, you have to be aware of um, of that. So you're you have to remember your own absolutely yeah. you have to learn to voice it and it's still extremely hard for me um so i often do this with my own oh yeah things yeah, and, and let others come first uh, yeah. um but uh i think still that when i went into drawing as a kid it was to be able to communicate something that i found really hard to communicate absolutely um so i hope that when i move forward from here uh, so this is for future espen when yeah, he looks yeah, back at cool. this <laughs> it's like i hope you do that yeah. uh and go in and and explore that side of you and and share it and yeah. dare to be naked but also to to uh, give other people the technical things that i've learned throughout my journey you know i moved to Newcastle in England and moved to Berlin and I moved to Los Angeles in order to learn tools of the trade in order so I could, I guess, learn the language in terms of picture making to clearly communicate a feeling to another person. And that's the thing of like learning to speak, right? And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I feel like I'm at a point where I've learned to speak. Yeah. Now the question is like, what do I want to say? Absolutely. So now comes the point of like m me going in and, and starting to open up and to be more naked about maybe some some of the yeah. things and feelings that I never fully expressed. Right. Um, and I and yeah, and to help others that maybe are in a similar situation or can relate with that or you know, and to give them maybe like a helping hand of like, so they can Absolutely. 
communicate and express their their, their things and thoughts and feelings, uh, absolutely, whatever they may be. Well, I, I found that, um, like, I, I was bullied pretty bad as a kid and picked on from a very young age. And it really had a huge effect on me for a long time because it just was a very anxious, shy kid and to a point to where I couldn't open the door when I was like 15 or 16 for the pizza man because I was so anxious to meet a stranger, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, I feel like those feelings, those anxieties, you might be able to push them down to the point where they're not visible, but they come out in other ways. Yes. Right? They come out in ways you could never even, you know, you, you can't even explain. You know? It's like that energy comes out and it needs an outlet. And I feel like part of the reason I'm doing this podcast a lot of it for myself just to like say things publicly, just to like get them out there, just to, you know, um, you know, be somebody who can speak honestly and not be ashamed of the things that I see as my faults, you know? And I feel like as a, I, 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 I'm going to group, I, I'm in Copenhagen right now, but I'm going to group our culture as like, you know, I guess on the internet, you know, I think people are becoming very similar. It's like our culture, um, I think really does value the hustle and values, um, you know, putting your uh, needs before the needs of your company or your family or other people. I often find that that's tragically a very common story of people feeling very anxious about their lives and not feeling like they can actually do anything about it. You know? um, and again, like part of the problem I want to solve for myself is just to um, the ability. The only thing I really want is the ability to speak honestly, you know, and actually be telling the truth when I when I do talk. You know? Yeah. Because uh, I have found those uh, that anxiety it comes out in like little lies that I tell myself, like little like uh, things that add up and compound to me you know, doing some pretty shitty things to other people sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's exactly it. It's like, what is the consequence if you don't? Yeah. Right? Like, how, how do you, now that you're like, okay, this is here, what do I do with it? Yeah. Because absolutely. if you don't, like as you look at your own say like if I don't do it and if I don't acknowledge it and if I don't find an outlet of some sort that can be creative and and uh, scary, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, and all of these things, then it will come out in different ways. So how do I find a way to work with it, you know? Right. Well, and, and use it. Absolutely I, I think it's sorry for anything again. No, go for it. I think it's the archetype of a like in, in mythological stories or fiction in general, there's the archetype of like walking into the woods, like going into the cave, whether it's Star Wars or King Arthur or, you know, whatever. There's always a metaphor of like going to a dark place. Yeah. Chaos. Your fears. Yeah, yeah. And like, it can either be something that's like drugs or alcohol or sex or, you know, money or any of those things, or it could be something like art or creativity or, you know, music or whatever. And I think it's like, um, you know, no matter what it is, like, Again, it's, um, I don't want to sound like I'm judging either, either decision either, because people make their own decisions for their own reasons, but, um, like, I guess the, I think the, the path to being, uh, evil in a traditional sense, I think is more of a domino effect of small decisions that grow into eventually somebody getting to a point to where they are considering mur like murdering somebody else. You know? Totally. Um, it's, uh. I have a story about some of them, yeah. because uh, I found myself to be, um, something happened, I'm not going to go too deep into that, something happened, and uh, I found them, I was very bitter, yeah. I was very bitter about it, and um, luckily um, enough, I had some people I could kind of talk to, yeah. to this, with this about it, and it's really hard for a friend or somebody to advise you uh, when you when you're the one being bitter right because they're like you have to you have to tread carefully right because you're angry and so i was angry and i was just like bitter and like that would kind of like come out and i knew that i needed to find a way to deal with it because otherwise this bitterness would de develop develop into resentment right. and i was on that verge yeah and I know that if I go to resentment, it can go really bad places from there. Yeah. So it's also, also like, I need to find a way to, to deal with this. Right. What I didn't know was how. Right. 
So I was talking with the people I felt safe with, you know, so I could air out this uh, anger. And I have a really good friend who uh, who was able to give me um, the key to to move onward from the resentment. Yeah. Um, his name is Chris Bjors, and he 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 was like, "You're you're not angry." And I was like, but I am angry, you know, and that was the feeling I was feeling. It's like, what is underneath the anger is sadness. And, um, you know, you're sad because you didn't feel, you didn't felt seen. Yeah. You felt like somebody uh, walked all over you. Yeah. You didn't stand up for yourself. So you also leave, a, you know, you're angry about yourself and you're replaying that. Sort of scenario. Yeah, exactly. But it was true. And, 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 and it kind of unlocked then a softness, a sort of this like angry hardness that was, that was feeling and, and, and putting out, yeah. it kind of swept it, flipped, flipped it where it was like, now I was like, yeah, yeah, I was sad. And yeah, this is like the root. It's like, I didn't feel that this person saw me and I felt that they stepped all over me. Yeah. And, um, and then for me, the solution was to, let go of the need of wanting to be seen and acknowledged by that person. Yeah. Because that's really what I, before I was looking for yeah. was for them to see what it is that happened, you know? And, Absolutely. Yeah, technology. And, yeah. But instead he helped me a lot with that and, and the people around me with yeah. giving that to myself. Absolutely. If that makes sense. Well, I, I was, a uh, I was reading this book called uh, Mere Christianity. And it's by C.S. Lewis and he goes into like, he explains Christianity in like a non-academic way. So it's very understandable. And like it's, it's like a conversation that you'd have with your buddy. You know? and in it, he talks about how pride is the greatest sin. It's like, it's not lust or greed or wrath or, you know, it's nothing like that. Cause like greed only goes so far. Greed only goes to like, you want anything you want. Well, pride will be the thing that's like, I want more than everyone else yeah. because I want to be better than everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And often I think that pride for me is the thing that it's never, it's never those other sins that are things that get me. It's the pride. It's the wanting to be like seen in a certain way. It's wanting to be, you know, uh, acknowledged by certain people. It's wanting to be just um, like having an ego, having too much of an ego, essentially. You know? And I think it's uh, it's strange to observe that in myself because um, I might con I might describe myself as somebody who's not prideful, but then I go and act that way. You know? and, um, I guess it's a, uh, I think, uh, I think that's one of the keys to being a, a happy person or, you know, I guess it's like a successful in a feeling good about yourself kind of way. It's letting go of, uh, um, like letting go of your pride, letting go of uh, entitlement to outcomes and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, um, you're human. Like, yeah. <laughs> there yeah, yeah, yeah. Us. yeah. And, uh, and and yeah uh, it's but it can be hard that's the thing it's so it's it's like it's, that's the beauty of it that's, i know like, that's I the know. best part is like it's like, it's like you. i can i can i can talk to anyone anyone listening to this i know you're prideful i know you're angry i know you're, it's like i found that it's like a universal thing everyone's anxious about their girlfriends or boyfriends everyone's anxious about their jobs or their money or yeah. like no matter who you are it's like if you had everything that you thought you want right now, you would find something else to be angry about. You know? totally. And it's, I'm not saying that it's the fault of anyone specific. It's everybody. You know? yeah. It's like, um, I think that's part of the human condition. And I think that's actually part of the meaning that you were, again, whether you want to call it God or, you know, the universe or random luck. I think that's part of the meaning in your life is the, uh, is that like, you know, uh, anger that you deal with, you know, yeah. Um, I'm going to double check that everything is. Yeah, yeah. Recording. Yeah, sorry. All good. But I think, I think that that's, I think that that's true too, where it's like, whatever you call it, right? Whatever you call it, it is, it is, and it can acknowledgement that there's something more to us that binds us together. Yeah. And, and I don't just mean us, I mean with everything. Yeah. That it is interconnected. Right. And there's both, right? 
um, you have order, you have chaos. I mean, we like to think in these sort of binary ways. Uh, of course, there's a lot of gray in between. Yeah. But once I'm I once I'm connected to that, or once I see that or experience that right. thing of like that we, somehow it is all connected in some sort of way. Yeah. Then I cannot remove my own experience from your also experience. And I can't not see you as removed from me because or you can, you can totally be like, have a mindset and a, a view where you can be like, we're completely different. Yeah. Right. If you don't have that piece of interconnectedness, yeah. we can be different, but you can also say we are also the same. So you need the two in a balance. Yeah. So once you have too much of one thing, you start to creating imbalance yeah. for a lack of better words and it can be anything um it can be let's take the the, the typical order in chaos if you have too much chaos it becomes extremely dangerous um like uh you know like things that you can like out of control um if you have too much order it becomes sterile yeah. it becomes too rigid right um and and there's no life there so yeah. we need like the life part often comes from the thing we classify as, as chaos right. and order is also needed but yeah. the, the question is always like where is that balance right. um, the same comes to we often look at uh, values or behavior yeah. so we are all built with different sort of values and behaviors and that can change over time too but let's say you're spontaneous by nature. Yeah. That's a behavior that we call spontaneity, yeah. right? So basically what it is, is you have a behavior that says in a certain situation, you do something unexpected. Yeah. And when it is called spontaneous, there's the positive badness added to that because we say you do something out of the blue to a situation that adds a new twist to it, like our new, so it gives it life, yeah. right? Yeah. But the same sort of behavior in a situation where it's inappropriate or it just doesn't come in. So you, there's a, let's say a tender situation, you do the same thing and you don't add to it, you take away from it, Absolutely. then then becomes recklessness. Absolutely. So you have the same, it's the same thing, yeah. But it's the difference of how it comes comes out. So you have like the two absolutely sort of. Uh, I think the Taoism, right? The balance and chaos, chaos and order. Yeah, and it's like, uh, and I, I don't know. I think as as I get older, I, I always I, I try to like when when I'm yeah. within myself too, where I'm like, where am I? Right. It's like where am I right now? What is, where am I leaning too much too much here? Am yeah. I leaning too much here? Right. And. Um, I think that exactly what you were, we were coming back to it, like, you know, like you said, talked about pride and how you were able to see that within yourself and ego, but you also said too much ego. And I like that part because it's like, we all need ego absolutely to some extent, but it's like, when, where's the balance, right? When does it become too much? And when is it too little? Yeah. Because it can be both. Um, and also, you know, like the, you know, if you own you know, your teeth, if you can say that, right. like, I, I don't, I don't enjoy when people can't acknowledge that they have dark sides. Yeah. You know, because then they're un, un, unconscious of it or yeah. they're unaware of it. And that makes it so much more yeah, difficult. Absolutely. Well, yeah. It makes it more dangerous too. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I, I mean, the Nazis thought they were right. You know, that every, the people who committed the Holocaust thought they were completely justified in what they were doing. Oh no. Do you want a napkin? Or? I think I took it all with my pants, so it's okay. all good. Okay, cool. We're good. Yes, no damage done. Sick. Um, but it's like everyone feels justified in the way that they behave, you know, and it's like a um I think it's a little bit. I, I think it's yeah. Sorry, Heinrich. It's fine. Are yeah. you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um I'm yeah. getting I'm getting all riled up. Yeah. Um, I, I, well, I think it's a, um, I was really into Jordan Peterson for a while and, you know, that whole thing. And I think it's like, he says something in his book where it's like, 
it's better to have a bad plan than no plan. And I think it's like, just by being a person, I mean, even just the way you mentioned, it's like, I've considered by a lot of people that I know as a very spontaneous person. And for a lot of people that inspires them, and that, like me, I'll, okay, let's go skydiving right now. And, um, or let's go do some crazy, let's go do a crazy road trip. And that's great for some people, but then for other people, in other aspects of my life, it does, it is too much. Like it is, like, it actually makes people uncomfortable. It makes people yeah. feel a pressure to do things that they don't actually want to be doing, you know? Yeah. And I found in my life in the past few years, I can't be like that all the time because it, it makes people uncomfortable. It makes people feel um, uh, like, again, pressure to uh, do things they don't want to do, you know? And it's been a very humbling lesson learning that, that uh, even with the greatest, the best intentions in mind I, that I have, I can go in and still cause cause harm, you know, cause anxiety, cause, like, it's not always the correct decision to do, to, like, go on a, a crazy adventure, you know, maybe the correct decision is just to sit around and watch TV and play video games, and, you know, just read a book, or, you know, and it's, uh, like, I, I heard morality described as keys on a piano, where it's, like, every single key in a song is right and wrong at different moments, you know, and if you play them randomly, you're not going to have anything, but you can play them you know, in a way that creates a beautiful symphony or a punk song or, you know, like it, everything, right? Um, and I think part of the uh, thing that I'm learning about being a person is that I'm not going to be right most of the time. And the things that I value are great and it's good for society. And the things that somebody else values is also great and good for society. And like, it's great that we have engineers and people who are artists and people that are like strippers and people that are politicians and people that are, you know, making, I don't know, like furry porn or something, you know, yeah. it's like, and they all contribute something to society to create the thing that we see around us. And it's, it's, I think it's a truly, again, like, um, like it's scary to admit to yourself that you're not able to solve the problems you, you know, like, like you could solve the problems that you solve, but not every every single one. You know, um, kind of acknowledging your um, mortality and uh, reasonable effect as like a single human being. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do you do that? Um, I guess you like for me, it's been traveling. It's just being seeing the entire world. It's like meeting so many people and seeing them. It's like you know, um, meeting people that are you know. Uh, baristas like Heinrich who you know, make coffee and people that are, you know, um, running hundred million dollar companies or people that are trash collectors or people that are, you know, again, strippers or people that are like artists, people, people doing anything and they're all living meaningful lives, you know, and it's like uh, looking at that and saying that they're all not contributing something to society is, I think is like it. It's hard to meet all these people and have meaningful conversations with them and say that, oh, I'm the most important person. The way I'm living is the correct way. Yeah. Because they seem to be perfectly happy too, you know? And they also seem to be perfectly anxious in the way that I'm anxious, you know? Um, so. But I, I, yeah, and then I think it's, I totally agree with you where it's like, if you start to impose your like ways of living and saying that that's the right thing for other people. It's like, yeah. you can't. It's like, absolutely. It's like, uh, we are, we're like an ecosystem yeah. that is, you know, it's very different from each other, but also interconnected in the same way that we're all living with each other. Absolutely. Just like if you go into a forest, you don't, uh, you don't go up to a different plant and say like you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't do. You, shouldn't do the, you know, like we don't have that sort of view when when it comes to to that sort of of nature. Absolutely. And I think the a lot of the damage that we often do is when we forget that part that we are part of nature. Yeah. And there is something very, uh, very. Uh, primordial i don't know if that's the right word but there's, I, think, I think it is yeah prim I, yeah there's something like we're older and than we often think of ourselves yeah we're way more complicated than we yeah. think we are yeah, yeah yeah but often often not like I, I i don't know like i've i don't know like for me i found that i work the best 
when I just focus on doing my little thing, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and stop worrying about whatever uh, other people are doing or or measuring myself with yeah. others. Um, but I also like to think of, I find more peace in myself when I'm like, I think myself of a, of a plant or a tree, yeah, you know, and I often do that in <laughs> where, where I'm like, oh, like, uh, we have different stages in life. And um, and you change right. throughout life. Your values, your views will change. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I think the first time in my life that I had a taste of that was uh, when I was 18. Yeah. I lost my brother. Um, he died very suddenly. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're 18 and that happens all of a sudden, yeah. It's a huge uh, shock to your system. Absolutely, it's like something you could never have been prepared for. Yeah, and um, and I'm very I'm very grateful and happy that it actually happened. I wasn't at the time, right? Um, uh, and the thing I feel it, it kind of gives was even though I was eighteen, but at that point of time. I was reminded of death, yeah, um, and and I think it matured me in a lot of points, but also had some setbacks and some others, which is just how it goes. Yeah. But throughout your life, you know, like and often when we're maybe right around our forties or fifties, if you hadn't had death close to you yeah. like that's often when you'll slowly start to experience more death, and then that starts. Yeah. coming into your stream of thought and you know like when we're 70 60 maybe depending on the person we will be much more aware of that sort of aspect of living where yeah. when we're younger we totally disregard Just ignore it. it right right yeah, yeah. well and it, again it's strange it's like a um like the truth of reality is that we're all going to die yeah right? it's like a um you know at some point in the next hundred years you know one, one of us is going to go first you know and it's like um and we might hear about it from a friend or we might hear about it, you know, just, you know, wherever. And it's like, um, you know, death is a real thing. And I think the goal is to be able to look at it and be like, that's, that's real. That's something that I'm going to have to face at some point in my life. And it might happen suddenly. It might happen over the course of a few years, but it's coming eventually, you know? Yeah. And I think it's like the way uh, that I've been thinking about it is like, it's a really useful thing to, confront because it makes life like a joke it makes like you know i, I was listening to a steve-o the guy from jackass talk yeah, and he yeah. was talking about how like you, you might have heard the quote where it's like uh life is a joke because you know the only the strongest instinct we have is to live and survive and the only guarantee that we have is that we're not going to you know and it's like um uh the goal is to find as much meaning as you can in the time that you're given and to do what you can with uh yeah again with the time that you're given and um i i think it's always uh i don't know it, it's a it's a very it's something i don't it's something i don't quite understand yet you know to be able to find meaning in your life in spite of knowing the fact that you're going to die yeah you know it's like it it really enforces to me the idea that the moment like right the second is the most important thing that I can can actually you know like the past and the future don't exist in a sense because I can't uh can't do anything about it like um it uh yeah again it's it's very strange it's a very very bizarre thing to to think about it is and I I think I think that that's also also where you know like it's funny because you know we're like we're sitting, we're sitting here and I'm like you know like oh this is like you were talking about like sometimes like you want to do like big things or something like that it's like it comes back to that sort of question too of like it doesn't need to be you know? yeah yeah like, <laughs> you know and I often find myself um like uh, it's not just me it's fucking everybody yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh. It's like I'm in the future often. Yeah. Like looking forward. I'm like, oh, then this, and then this, and then this. And then 
you know, like, you know, we forget to be here. We forget to be present. And um, I find, you know, throughout my life, um, there are, of course, some moments that stick out more than others. And I think it's when I am yeah. there, you know, I'm not anywhere else in my mind. And, and I've, I've been very lucky and fortunate that um, my, my parents are still together. Yeah. And uh, they're going strong. They're awesome. I've been they're so they're they're amazing. Honestly, like they're they're fucking. That's awesome. They're troopers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and they live at the same house that I grew up in. Yeah. So for me, whenever I go home, it's like a stone in time. Right. Like which is fucking rare. Yeah. But it's like. It's like this thing that's like a constant. And I know that at some point that won't be a constant anymore. Right? There will be a point where that's gone. Um, but as of right now, I'm really enjoying it. Absolutely. You know, I'm enjoying that every time I, yeah. I visit them, uh, then there's a certain sense of peace and quietness and meaning. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, I think also like uh, intimacy, and you know, like Absolutely. because there's so much history and right. memories. Uh, even though we still continue to make more as we move forward. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, it, again, it, it, this is all the things I'm talking about when I say I believe in God, where it's like on a cosmic scale, nothing matters, right? In a hundred years, even it's not going to matter. In a million years, it's definitely not going to matter. In a billion years, it's like the idea of mattering won't even exist. <laughs> you know, it's just um and you know like i was in a dog park a few months ago and i was watching dogs play fetch and to those dogs them playing fetch was the most meaningful thing i've seen any living being ever you know ever do it's like they're running they're at a full sprint run back just and it, again on a nihilistic sense it's like oh those dogs playing fetch it doesn't matter but like also on a cosmic scale the things that we do don't matter you know I was in Cologne and the cathedral there is incredibly beautiful. It took like 500 years to build. It's like, does that matter? And the answer is no on a cosmic scale. But the more. Is it? What? Is it? It doesn't matter or not? No, like, is that true? I, th I think it took hundreds of years to build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, And it's like, well, did, did, are you asking like. If it matters or not? Well, I, th I think the answer is yes. It does matter. It matters to you. It's like, I think it's important to like. I think that's why it's always important to tell the truth is because it's like anyone can choose some any arbitrary sense of period of time in which it's not gonna not gonna matter right but like you can say that and then if i stabbed you you'd be like this really matters <laughs> yeah. i really want to go to the hospital you know it's yeah. like, it's like you, you know it's like pain definitely matters to you it's something that you can really true. think about you know so the opposite of that must exist you know yeah. and the problem with that is that it's something that you can choose to grab or not you know and um and it, it's also like in the past i've heard people say it's like why would i want to commit myself to a relationship where i know it's going to end why would i want to commit myself to you know like like your parents are going to die right that's real it's like the real truth of being a human being your friends are going to die eventually you know eventually you're going to be at a friend's funeral your dog is going to die and it's like does the death that the end does the end of it worth make it not worth a path not not a path not worth working or walking down you know and if the answer is yes i think you're um maybe like giving up the thing that gives your life meaning I mean, you're actually saying you're you're deciding that the world is meaningless you know? yeah. um, and you're actually throwing yourself into more pain like absolutely which is yeah. like ironic right but um there is this um uh, it's like, uh, what's the meaning of dance? Yeah. Your body's moving, you're spending resources, but you're not getting anywhere. Absolutely. You know, you're just, you're just using, you're running and your body's doing all of these sort of things, but it's not going anywhere. Absolutely. And tons of movement without any direction. Yeah. But it's a dance. Yeah. You know, and I, I always come back to the, the, uh, this, uh, I think it's Alan Watson, who was like, uh, life is a, was like life is a dance and wait life is the dancer and you are the dance yeah yeah that's how it was and i i love that part it's, yeah. it, and it is that yeah you know like it's all going to be gone right 
but that doesn't mean you shouldn't you know yeah go into it and, and with with a relationship too it's like yes there's gonna be pain right you know absolutely and if you're afraid of that pain i get it you know like you've been hurt before you have hurted people in in the past it's fucking scary right. you don't go into relationships with the intention of hurting but it's going to happen absolutely the question is then how do you deal with it right it's like how do you repair and and i off like <laughs> it's funny that you bring up that uh, example because i was in therapy yeah. when i was in los angeles and that's what this was the exact yeah. thing i was yeah. working yeah. on yeah. with my therapist yeah. where i was so fucking afraid of of uh of going into a relationship because yeah. of i was afraid of hurting i was yeah. afraid of being hurt yeah so it was easier just to avoid the pain yeah. but one of the things that uh, my therapist helped me with was like was to see them as interconnected right it was like exactly like if you want to have a relationship and to to be intimate and to have all these wonderful things then this is the price right. so you are going to feel pain you are and it's going to hurt immensely yeah the question is then what do you want to do with it like do you want to repair make it stronger do you want you know and i think often that pain and when you go through all of that pain is the thing that gives it meaning absolutely exactly like it's who thing, wants it's exciting right? exactly yeah. exactly it's yeah. the it's the order and chaos it's yeah. like it's a necessary absolutely um and of course there are unnecessary pain you know you don't want to you know cause that yeah um, and there are ways that you know you can be aware of like don't don't cause unnecessary pain you know like absolutely so um but it's all lessons and I, I think it's it's important that we do and there, it takes bravery too yeah, yeah. it's so easy sometimes just to say like right. oh nothing matters fuck this fuck that yeah. like to hell with that and it's like yeah sure well but the thing is like both perspectives are correct that's yes. the thing about it and it's it's a matter of like a you know it's not about looking at it logically it's about looking at it you know just how it makes you feel you know emotionally you know and spiritually and yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, to, to, to get real, it's like the, the, you know, um, about relationships. Like I, I think I really did hurt somebody. I was with somebody for four years and then I ended it in a way that hurt both of us in a very painful way. And it ended in a way where I haven't spoken to her in three years or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, um, I wouldn't, un I wouldn't undo any part of it. I wouldn't any undo any mistake that I made because that was a path I had to walk down. You know, that was a path that I had to confront in the same way that when like a five-year-old pushes another five-year-old in the sandbox and they realize, oh, that was a mistake. That's, that was like what I had to do in order to, you know, um, figure out like, oh shit, I was an asshole, you know? And as I'm moving forward, I'm seeing that the dragon in my life, like the, um, metaphorical dragon or the, you know, Darth Vader or the, you know, the villain in my life is, um, the adventure to go on is uh, like confronting those feelings, confronting, you know, that fear of being in a relationship or that anxiety or that insecurity. And that's the thing that's like, um, that's the place where I least want to look, you know? Yeah. And the scary part of that is that I think that's uh, where I can find the most meaning in my life, you know, the most, uh, um, the most happiness, you know? And, um, again, very, very bizarre to uh, think of it that way. Very scary. And also, like, you know, like, even with, you know, even though you caused pain from that breakup, right? And you're, like, you're obviously thinking about the pain that you put on somebody else. You put a lot of pain in yourself, too. Absolutely. That's the thing that we often forget about. It's like, there's shame, there's guilt. Yeah. And... You know, like that takes effort, time to work through too. Absolutely. Um, and to forgive yourself, yeah. you know, can right. be really hard. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I was reading about PTSD. And it's like the thing that gives people PTSD isn't necessarily seeing things happen. It's more about seeing themselves do things that they never thought they could do. You know, yeah. it's like killing another person or like I, I don't I don't even want to go down the list of things that might give somebody PTSD, but to watch yourself walk down a path that you would never choose to go down is um you know, it keeps people up at night. That's what causes, you know, people to just, you know, go crazy from anxiety, you know? Yeah. And uh 
Um, again, it's a lot of this stuff has to do with the hero's journey. It's like, are you the um, like the Saruman and or the Gandalf? You know, it's like Saruman, Lord of the Rings is a very logical character. It's like, yeah, Sauron is all powerful and he's gonna destroy everything, so I'm gonna join him. And, you know, or Gandalf is like, no, let's let's not do that. And, yeah. Yeah, I think I think with that specific example, that's the archetype of the magician. Yeah. Um, which is uh, it's it's interesting because the magician is often re re he revolves about around power. Yeah. Um, but in that in that archetype too, um, there's different ways to handle power and also to know your own constraints. And yeah. that's the thing with Gandalf too. It's like he has the ring, right? Right, but he knows, despite the huge temptation, he knows that he cannot handle it. Yeah, right. and he manages to let go of that yeah. power. If that makes sense, Absolutely. and that's that's the main thing that sets them apart. Yeah, is the is the power hungriness. If Absolutely, you, if that makes sense, you know. Well, I, and it's I think it's a like there. I think there's that thought that everyone has where it's like. Oh, if I was in power, then everything would be great. You know? Which is like that's the fucking one ring, man. That's, yeah, I know. That, yeah, that's it. I know. Yeah. I totally agree. And then when people also like, you know, like I want to be a politician, I will often are like that's the person that shouldn't be a politician. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you know? The people that should be in power are the people that are completely like, you know, they're in the Shire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it's 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 really interesting, and I think with the archetypes too, it's like. We're all of we're all of them, right? Absolutely. And yeah. you know, you might be in one more than other, yeah. but you can use it to kind of balance yourself. And it's it's hard because you will never know who the fuck you are, right? Um, and you're not supposed to in some sort of way, or maybe you are. I I don't know. Yeah. Um, I completely lost the red thread here, but <laughs> well, I, I, I I've been thinking a lot about the archetype of the fool. You know, the yeah. Fool, the fool is the, pre fool. the fool is the precursor to the king. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's like very relevant in art where you need to be a fucking fool before you can be a king. Anything. You know, yeah. And it's like very apparent. It's like, like I, I met Scott Flanders at the Watts Atelier boot camp and we sat next to each other and I was like studying academic figures for years. And I thought, oh, I'll be able to make an illustration after studying figures. And I knew nothing about composition or painting or anything. I was like, I'll be able to do something. And I went in and made an embarrassingly bad painting. And it was like, oh, fuck. Like, oh shit. I was like, thought you know i thought i was more than i was but in order to learn that lesson i needed to be i needed to be the fool you know i needed to be somebody who was like uh prepared to look uh to be prepared to be embarrassed you know prepared to be somebody who didn't know what they were doing you know yeah. and i think uh like uh in a biblical sense the like if you're a ceo and you are fired from your job and you lose all of that status and money that goes along with becoming a, being a CEO, the wrong thing to do is to sit around and be sad about it. The right thing to do is to um, take a, a job that you see is below your station because that's all you can do. You know? yeah. Just like move forward. You know? yeah. and, 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 and try different things, right? But I, I agree. It's like, and it's funny too because, um, because with the fool, just to uh, bring it into... Um, just to bring it into a story, um, I was on the splash team for five years, yeah. approximately, and with that, there comes a certain sense of prestige, yeah. like because you know that's very front facing artwork, right? very front facing, yeah, and yeah. people are like, whoa, you know, yeah. that's a big company, and right, that's right. that's that's the ones, and and. I had come to a point too where I wasn't being the fool much more anymore. And I think that was I I I saw it, but I was also afraid. I was afraid of jumping into something new, jumping into something that was scary, but I also wanted to. Right. It's like because I was getting it's kind of getting bored of it. Right. Because I I, I did it even before that when I got in five. So it's like I think employee, I think it's like I've done it at a time for like six years. Yeah. I love making illustrations. I still do. Yeah. Um, but when you do the same thing over and over again, anybody will eventually get bored. Yeah. But, you know, like letting go of some of that 
and 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 go into the deep water again. Yeah. Be the be the fool, right. and you know it's also exciting. It's like absolutely. And but if but after after I moved back to Denmark and I essentially quit my job and and uh, and kind of like was unemployed for you know, four or five months. Yeah. Um, it was very humbling, but it was extremely freeing. Yeah. yeah. Where all of a sudden I was like, oh, I can draw whatever I want. <laughs> absolutely. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I found different, I found way more happiness in it. I think, honestly, I, I was, I think I was, I was uh, very tied up with, you know, like some of the things that, you know, there's a sense of security, right. you know, having the, 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 the job and, 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 and it's really good. Like it, it's a good thing. I yeah. think for me, it's just, I, I always had that part of a journey right. where I needed to let go of that and take an a leap of faith right. of trying to trust yourself to of like you figure out your next step. Yeah. yeah. And the next step will come. Yeah. Um, but you know, like going into those four months too, of like of sketching and, and doodling and it yeah. felt great. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's, it's it's extremely difficult to be in a place where you are the cool guy. You're you're like I think everyone their entire lives they want to be in a place where they're validated and people are telling them you're awesome, you're cool, you're doing big money, you're you know you have fans, you have all these things, and to go from being there and then being like, okay, this is it was nice to have this, but it's like this isn't this isn't the rest of my life, you know, and it's. Um, Again, I think that's a very, very, again, very scary step to make is like, uh, there's a price to pay to giving it up. But the, um, I think the hardest part about doing that is acknowledging that, uh, being validated by everyone else is not the end goal. Actually, it's to be validated by yourself. Totally. And, and, and I think it also like, it's like. To bring it back to our Gandalf and Saruman, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think a little bit like, you know, like I, I, I think for me at that point of stage, it was also like I needed to go back out and reinvent myself. Yeah. You know, like um, I felt like whatever output it was that I was coming out with needed to be of a, of a very high sledge quality, right? And that was the thing I was known as. Yeah. And that's a brand sort of thing, and, and, and that, that has something to it. Right. Um, but there's this thing of like, you know, like, um, it's not called a gimmick, it's called something else. And when you do a thing, and people like it, and you keep just doing it, you yeah. know. But it, but at some point, it doesn't give you anything anymore. It may be used to at some point. It's like that sort of dilemma between the musician and the fans, right? Absolutely, yeah. When you played Highway to Hell, <laughs> right, right. They've been playing it for fucking forty years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> you're fucking sick and tired of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but other people are getting joy of it. Right. So you want to find that balance of like, what is something that people, of course, like. But also that you like absolutely and making time of like of going out and exploring reinventing finding new things that you can add to yourself yeah um and i think that's why the giving back is so important yeah because if you if you go throughout your journey and you just you're like this you just yeah. hold on to whatever you learn whatever yeah. you're like oh this is so uh, so uh yeah. Valuable, I can. This is mine. I'm not gonna share it with anybody. Or when people are like, oh, I can't see what I know or whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People will eventually, yeah. like, it will eventually find its way into the world yeah. because it's not yours. Yeah. yeah, you think it is, but it isn't. Yeah, yeah. Can't take credit for it. No. Yeah. So, so you, so you can, you can, if you let go of that, you, you put it into the world, right. then. You know, both you're going to be seen as you're being generous with what it is that you're finding. This is a hero's journey of going into the chaos, bringing back the boon, going out again. Yeah. So it's like, okay, go out, give it, give what it is that you know, and then go out and go into the whole process again. Yeah. And that's where I am right now, where 
I've been doing this for a long time and it's, you know, I've been super busy, but I've been trying to give back whenever I found the opportunity of it's giving a talk or, you know, making a video or something like that. It's like, okay, give it. So, because I found that when you give, you open the space for something new. Absolutely. If you just hold on, it's going to grow dead and stale and you're just going to drag it with you. Yeah. And it's actually pulling you down more than it's actually helping you move forward. Absolutely. Well, and and again, I think that's an important thing is to acknowledge that nothing that you have is yours. It's like, you know, the, um, I'm going to double check this system. Yeah. You Um, can reset it too, because sometimes the video becomes very long. I think this stopped. Oh yeah. Yeah. I realized that. I think the battery died. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, again, it always goes back to, um, I think art fundamentally is just another form of communication. You know, the same way that writing or you know, dancing or singing or anything is, is just communication. And I think the important part about that is that, like, um, not to take yourself too fucking seriously. Like, at the end of the day, we're just, like, painting monsters and characters and people's swords and axes and stuff. It's, like, not that, I mean, it's important, but it's not that important, you know? I think it's, like, um, one of those things where, um, you know, you're not, you're, you're just sharing ideas fundamentally. You're just trying to make people feel a certain emotion, you know, and, um, believing it's actually that truthfully is, is really a tool, I think, to let go of your ego. And once you could do that, then, um, I found that money and wealth in a in a good way, people that live and become wealthy and um, well known and, and have freedom over their time, in a, in, again in a good way, there are people that they give way more for free than they return than the, the give in return for people. And over time, that giving away for free it comes back and it's given back to them, you know, a hundredfold or tenfold or however much you know that they that they give away, you know, and you know. Um, I was talking to uh, uh, Scott about this. We were talking about him making a uh, like a concept art course or something. And we're talking about how it's like if he makes a course and you know he makes a million dollars off of it, that's great. But if he makes it and one person watches it and that becomes that person's bible for becoming an artist, it's still worth making because you like you know you fundamentally affected and changed somebody's life. You know. Yeah. And like a question that I ask everybody is like, would you be doing exactly the same thing you're, you'd be doing if you had a billion dollars? And it's like, I, when I look at somebody like you and I'm like, could I pay you money to stop painting? And the answer might be no. Like there's no amount of money that I could give you that you'd be like, okay, I'm going to stop painting. You know? yeah. And it's like, when you look at that, it's like, it's not about the fucking money at all. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's about something way deeper than that. Yeah. It's like, sorry, I, I need to go in here. Yeah. Um, Yes. And with, and, and I'm sorry, I'm getting excited because yeah. I feel like that we're, we're getting yeah. like to a place that I don't know, like it's like, yeah, actually, <laughs> oh, maybe it's the coffee. Yeah. I don't know. But it's, um, but I think that's a really important thing for young listeners too, that are about to embark on this journey because we're like, they're so focused on Instagram or whatever. Right. And they're like, you know, would you have 10,000 likes? Yeah. Where it's just like, oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Next, you know? Or would you have 20 where five of them were like people that were this really picked this picture really meant something for Absolutely. You. Like it's like it's like you're a chef yeah. and you're cooking food. And you can make fast food that is liked by a lot of people, or you can make nutritious food that are delicious, delicious, yeah. healthy, there for a long time. Yeah. You know? It depends. Um, Absolutely. Well, and I think that both measures are, uh, e- you know, uh, valid measures of, of I guess, uh, quality. You know, it's like it's numbers and quality. You know, and the, how much meaning somebody gets out of something. You know, they're both logically they make sense, and it's. Um, I think it's important to, like, like you need the numbers in order to make a living, right? So you need to you need to think about that logically, but then you also need to think about like what is this actually doing for people? Is this actually helping people? You know, 
Yeah. And this is helping you. Absolutely. Because some people get really successful doing shit they don't enjoy. Yeah, yeah, which is tragic. <laughs> I <laughs> know. Well, again, it's like, I don't know. I think success is easy. I think, I mean, success is easy, but doing it in the way that's correct is fucking hard. You know? Yeah, because you say you got to stay true to yourself too. Like you can go, I mean, here's, this is an example. We all know that girls, yeah. like not girls isn't perfect, like, but drawing the female body yeah. and everything generally is more popular right. than monsters yeah right so you can say oh, okay you can just make like these are the trends this is what people generally like and then you can kind of like aim towards that yeah. which is extremely effective and there's nothing wrong with that i'm not shaming it i'm like that's good yeah the important step is is that what you want yeah is that true to you is that true to your interest and what you want to do and i think that that's all also like the best sort of advice is like for any artist it's like what is it that you want to do yeah. like you can learn all the technical things you can gain all the tools you can sharpen your sword so it's yeah. fucking sharp but yeah That's what are you gonna do with it well, you yeah, know? yeah. Well, i am i have the sharpest sword I the cool but armor. i yeah. don't know how to fucking use yeah, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know oh, fuck shit <laughs> Well, it's it's a reason I like you could say whatever you want about Picasso, but I really admire him from the perspective where he could paint really well. Like he was a brilliant draftsman, yeah. but he painted what he painted by choice because he's this is like this is what I actually want to do, you know. Totally. And it's like people say oh, I could paint. Am I told my three year old could paint that? It's like no, not really, you know. Yeah. And um, like it always comes back to the fact that you are going to die and they only have a certain amount of time left, and it's like. Um, I, I, I think you would relate to this where no matter how big of a project that you've worked on, the clout and the excitement of working on a big project that a lot of people see disappears in like an hour, you know, like, maybe not an hour, but eventually, eventually. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> or like a month or two, you know, yeah. but eventually it goes away. You're like, Oh, that was cool. But you know, um, it's not going to last me the rest of my life, you know, last like six months or something, yeah. you know? Um, and then it's like a, um, you need something else beyond that to actually give yourself validation. Because if you keep chasing that high, you're going to be perpetually disappointed. Yeah. Totally. It's funny too, because I find like when I'm talking about like, you know, like you have a super sharp, sharp sword, yeah. but you don't like how to use it. I feel that's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, right. no, no, seriously, yeah, like, right. it's like, oh yeah, it's when you're sitting and you're saying like, you know, uh, you, you know, what have I done essentially? I've been working for a really big company uh, and I've been working within their style and universe. And I, I, I genuinely enjoy it. I think it's, it has a lot of fun aspects to it, but right. now I've kind of like gone through all these years of training. I have a very sharp sword, Yeah. but I think it's also getting time to me to like, try to be like, okay, what do I want to say, you know, right. and, and, and try to dare to become kind of that sort of like going to a naked place of like, right. Being, and yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah. 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 Right. So, so I'm, I'm saying it with a bit of the self irony too, where I'm like, you know, I know I'm sitting saying this, but, I, and I think, I think that there is generally like there's periods of time where, where you're in one period, you're training, yeah. right. You're training. If it's karate, you're training the punch and you're doing the punch a thousand times. Right. So you're learning so it becomes muscle memory. You can just like right. now you have to learn to fucking kick. I'm like, oh, oh great. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh man. Right. Right. And then you do the fucking kick. And then all of a sudden you build up this like arsenal of kick and punches yeah. and, and moves. That's the first start. That's the fool. Right. right. That's like repetition. Right. Keep going, keep going. And then you go into a place where you you are in the middle. Yeah. And there you go through the trials and you have to keep going and, and, and learning too, right? And eventually you become somewhat of a master right. where you now can learn, you know what the rules are, you can perform, you can do them efficiently and you have like, you've gone through this whole process. So you, you can, you know what to do and you can start bending the rules. Right. You can start breaking the rules, but you need to know why. Yeah. And then then you're left with the question of like, yeah, what do you do with it? You know, why did you learn karate? Absolutely. Yeah. Again, going back to the beginning of the conversation, it's, it's always about the why. You know? Yeah. And it's like, I feel like um, the uh, technique of it can be a very safe place to be. It's like, oh, if I just study, it, it's always the right decision to study anatomy or to study color or to study composition. Because that's always a place, you know, it's like, uh, it can almost be an excuse, you know. 
and it's um the reality is that like the uh the thing that's going to give you the most meaning is never the technique you know it, it it's like again what you're saying with it what you're doing with those tools and and the way again this is me just predicting but the way that your art might transform in the future it might be completely different from what you expect it might be right now you know most it likely might be very abstract it <laughs> might have some interpretive dance elements to it you know it, yeah. it might be completely fucking off the wall wacky but yeah. it's like um it needs to um and it needs to leave that safe place before it can be, it can transform into the thing that it's gonna end up you know end up being you know? totally and and also to go back with the validation and 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 that uh, and the uh, you know going for the big things like one of the re one of the thoughts that i was having when i was like quitting my job and deciding to go back to to denmark was you know like am i gonna be on my deathbed thinking like wow i'm really happy i made this splash yeah you know like yeah. no yeah, yeah <laughs> like, like, I made like he yeah. is like great job <laughs> it's like nice. Well, no, it's like, I, I, I genuinely think it comes down to your relationships and the people, Absolutely. you know, yeah, and, context. Yeah. and who you were. And, and I really would love people to remember me with a smile. Yeah. Like, absolutely. like if I could do that, then that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but also like, I was like, you know, how much time do I have with my parents? You know, and, you know, yeah. I moved and uprooted my life. To be in Los Angeles, yeah. and I was there for all, almost five years, and I didn't. I tried to see my parents and my family as much as possible, um, but you know, just like many other people, I had to go through the hardships of lockdown, COVID, and whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you're like, okay, how much more time am I willing to sacrifice? Yeah. You know, and what is it that really matters? Like, yeah. I went over there. I grew, I learned, um, and, you know, like, how much do I have to prove, you know, Absolutely. and I was like, you know, like, I, was like I, I did what I wanted to do for now, yeah. and I don't need to be in Los Angeles to do this, Absolutely. so I was like, okay, if I don't need, I, I would still love to continue working, and I was like, yeah. I would still love to work with you guys, yeah. um, and, you know, eventually we figured something out, um but but you know it's like i don't need to be in la to do the work absolutely yeah I can do it here yeah absolutely. and i can i can that's both worlds i know yeah. but it, it it was still scary to kind of be like okay because eventually it, it didn't work out and then i was like sitting without anything you know for a long time yeah. and then you start thinking you know like oh maybe i'm you know maybe it was me maybe i did something wrong or maybe i'm not as good or maybe i don't have what it takes and yeah. And that just happens. And then that was just overthinking and, yeah. and insecurity that was at play there. Um, but when I got home and I, you know, I was with my parents again, I was like, I was just like, this is worth it. You yeah, know, it's like, the right decision. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. like, it's, and it's like, I, I know too that I'm super fucking fortunate. Yeah. Like I know, like that relationship with my folks is not something that everybody has. Absolutely. And, uh, I don't know, man. I, I just didn't want to take it for granted. Well, it's, it's, do, 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 do you remember that scene Gladiator when Marcus Aurelius and Maximus are sitting in the tent? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm so, like, he's, Maximus is, like, telling him about his family. He's like, oh, I'm a farm. I'm going to go harvest these crops. And and uh, the emperor of Rome is like, oh, should I, I'm so envious of you. And he's, like, surrounded by all these statues of him. And he's in this very, you know, obviously he's the emperor of Rome, you know? Yeah. And he's jealous of Maximus because he has all this meaning in his life, you know? Yeah. And it's like a, um, I think that's part of the reality of being the successful king is that it's very lonely, you know? And it's like, you have all this clout, you have all this, um, all this uh, glory, you know? But the glory does not make you feel good about your kids or your family or anything, you know? It's like the glory for Marcus Aurelius made his son murder him, you know? Yeah. And it's like a, um, I've seen it happen in, in my own life to a certain degree where it's like, um, you know, my dad was very successful in comic books and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, there was a lot of glory associated with him 
you know, he helped run, run Wildstorm and, you know, was an executive at DC. And then recently he was like running Marvel Comics. And there's a lot of glory involved with that. But then there's, a, you know, there's so many people pulling on you at all times that you can't develop deep relationships, you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's cool to go to Comic-Con for free and all that kind of stuff. But there, again, there's a price, you know? Um, and that's the thing I've been figuring out by living in a van is that like, I've been able to live a very validating and happy life by giving up essentially everything that I own. Like I only own a few books. I have a bed, can't stand up in my van. And it's, it's been existentially and spiritually fulfilling because um, I realize I don't have to have fancy things. I don't have to have all this other, all these other things in my life to live a meaningful life, you know? Um, and it's beautiful and it's amazing, you know? And um, again, to me, it sounds like you have done, it. like you, you've gone and gotten the glory and you, you were the like soldier in the battle that, you know, were the war hero, right? And it's like, you come home and it's like, okay, you know, I, I've defeated the dragon. Time to be the fool again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Then I, I honestly think that I see it as a training period. Yeah. Um, but I'm also afraid a little bit that if I'm going to go and do the thing that means something more to me, right? Because I feel, you know, it's, it's been great. It's been awesome. But I also am not fully expressing like something that is more meaningful to me. I have a, a story and yeah. like the things connected to my brother that I would love to make into, yeah. you know, a, a, a story and um, and to make that into art um, and help um, help myself with going deeper into it. Yeah. It's feelings and, and some things that, you know, a deep grief that uh, I've been trying to selectively go into when I felt I had the the fortitude and, and the softness to do so. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I still have a lot of work to do there. Um, but I hope that with telling the story and making it, then I can release some of that, some of those things that are kind of stuck. Yeah. And I hope too that it can be a place and a, and a story where people that are either going through something similar yeah. or having a friend that is going through something similar can get a, maybe just like a little taste of yeah. what that feeling is. Yeah. If you never had that experience, you know, and you can relate right. and it can be something that, you know, can connect people or make you feel that you're not alone. You yeah. know, I think that that's good. That would be a good time, a good thing to spend my time yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Make people not feel alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So um, I'll ask you this sort of question of like, um, like, so how do you want people to remember you? Like when you're, when you're in at the end? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's a complicated question. I mean, the answer is that it changes on my mood, you know? It's like sometimes I want the glory, sometimes I want the peace, sometimes I want the honesty, sometimes I want to be remembered in a bad way, you know? And it's like, um, I think the average answer is honesty. The average answer is like, I want to be remembered as somebody who just tried their best, you know, who was not arrogant, somebody who's not prideful, somebody who is okay being the fool, you know? Because um, I, I've seen what uh, pride can do to myself and other people. And it's, that's, as long as I'm remembered as somebody who wasn't prideful, I guess that's, that's the goal, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if I could somehow bring a small amount of good into the world, then I think I will have lived a very meaningful and fulfilling life. Uh, and uh, again, identifying what that means exactly is a very difficult thing to do. Right. And it's just I love the like it, you say like it it changes over yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, you know, because really it does. Hard. Yeah, yeah. It does. It's yeah. a ritual like that. Yeah. It will change economically. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am the dog in the dog park playing with the stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I am. So, yeah. 
Um, and I act on impulse and I act on passion and I act on you know, tons of different things. And, um, again, we're way more complicated than we think we are. Uh, it's very, very strange. Yes, that's what makes it fun too. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, I was kind of curious with um, with the pride, right? Because yeah. we all feel it. I definitely have pride and we do. Yeah. Um, like, uh, what is it that you're, you're like, because it feels like it has a, a bigger place yeah. for you? And I think it's uh, like, I want to, there's a, a dark, part of me that wants to be incredibly successful like successful to the point where i can just like order people around and why and i walk into a room why is it that success gives you i think it's a uh, safety or it's like a certain like a certain like a dark safety you know okay. it's like a um like people can assume things about me when i walk into a room that like i don't have to do any work yeah. when i talk to somebody they just already worship me or something you know? yeah yeah and i think um Again, it's it's like wanting to be a celebrity, wanting to be like a again wanting to be the king. You know, it's like a like I think Carl Jung said this, where it's like be afraid of unearned wisdom. You know, yeah. and again, I think I want the unearned wisdom. You know, I want to be able to just be like, go do that, go do that thing. You know, I want to be able to walk into a room with uh, billionaires and confidently ask for a hundred million dollars of their money to go and execute my idea you know? yeah. and i don't know if that's a good thing to want you know it comes with a lot of pride a heavy, heavy does, price yeah, yeah it does yeah it's like if you listen to elon musk talk he's like people i, I was listening to an interview with him and you somebody asked him like what's a life like in the day of you know the real life tony stark he's like you don't want to fucking be me you know it's like i work 80 hours 100 hours a week and i have like four ex-wives and like I think a five now, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it with Grimes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, um, he lives a stressful life. And um, I I guess it's like a, um, you, you can talk to anyone that knows me really well. It's like a, uh, the clout of, you know, potentially being a billionaire in some way is very, uh, um, tempting for me you know yeah. like money and power and that kind of stuff i think that's also maybe from because of from where you are you were born and raised yeah absolutely right where i find that that is more prevalent in the states too yeah yeah we, we i mean everyone knows who bill gates is everyone you know is raised like i look at a guy like bill gates or steve jobs or elon musk or any of those people in almost like a religious way. It's like, those are people, those are like the prophets of power, the prophets of money, you know? Yeah. And um, it's like being raised in the United States. And then um, I was born in, I lived in a town called Connecticut or in Darien, Connecticut for nine years of my life. And um, the, uh, I was like upper middle class family, but the area that I was in was the wealthiest district in the entire United States. And um, I went to public school with people whose parents were making $40 million per year or something. You know? yeah. And it's like $10 million, you know, absurd amount of money just being thrown around. Um, and I think being in that environment, just like, um, it's hard not to value the things that, uh, it's not it's hard not to value the environment that you're in you know just by the nature of being a person you just like oh that's the way people are supposed to be that's you know, people are supposed oh everyone's making 10 million dollars per year you know if i'm not doing that then i'm a loser you know? so, yeah. um, and again i'm not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination like i'm not a million you know, other things yeah yeah it's uh but again it's um you know uh it's uh, I, I'm not saying that money is bad, but I think that the uh, there is a dark side to everything. Yeah. It's very common in those kind of social circles for pride to be very like a. I mentioned this earlier. It's like I think Socrates said something like, um, "No great crime was done out of necessity; it was done out of excess." It's like 
no one, um, you know, buys, uh, goes and buys a million houses in Copenhagen and increases the rent to ridiculous, ludicrous levels because they're, they don't have enough food, you know, they're doing it because of pride, you know. Yeah, or wanting to increase uh, an investment, you yeah, know, right, earn right. more money. Yeah, yeah, right, to be, uh, you know, to get the validation of, you know, the CEO or something. Being the richest man or whatever the goal is. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I agree. I think I, I thank you for, for that piece too of like, you know, I didn't know about that sort of upbringing. And yeah. It makes sense if, it, if you grew up with, with where, where that was like the norm, right? Yeah. And people were kind of like, it is that sort of like, you know, it's like sort of like status thing of, of showing your yeah. worth, yeah. right? Which it becomes like this sort of, uh, it's exactly what we talked about at the start with the connection, right? It's like, of like, do you need an external factor to to prove that you're worth something, you know? Or can you find it? And, and I think that's, it's funny because when you're, when you're saying how you're like, you're on your, your world trip right now, yeah. it's almost like a pilgrimage. Absolutely. You know, it, it totally is. <laughs> yeah. In the same way that people go to Mecca, people like to do yes. anything. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's a very religious experience. Yes. Yeah. So, so you're, you're finding and discovering new parts of yourself too. And Absolutely. you're, you're integrating them um, to, to, to you too. So it's, it's, it's interesting to see, I think that's like, that's the fantasy you're saying like about like, of like that sort of power and that you saw it, like you actually saw it, right? Like in, in, a, in a lot of ways where it's like, and when, when everybody around you agrees and kind of like it's like this is important right we get dragged into it yeah absolutely like, doesn't matter how fucking strong you are yeah. it's like environment affects you one well. fucking ring man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so so it's like so you know like your your upbringing and all that it's like it, it's you know like it, it taught you a certain thing of like this is important because that's what was was important absolutely. at that point of time yeah. and and there's still people that are very much in that, right? And and yeah. and it can do good things like having money. It's like, but it's like the money is just resources for you. Like, this this is how I see it. Like money can give possibilities and a certain sense of stability. Yeah. To a certain degree. After that, money gives you resources to go do other things. Yeah. So it's, it's, and maybe this is idealistic thinking, but I think it's, it, it is hitting some truth, maybe not all true. Yeah. So the way that we, we structure it is, is that we give resources in terms of money or other, other things. We give them resources so they can go and do more things. Yeah. And hopefully those things that they go and do starts tickling down to more people. And I think that's really what's been proven true so far with, you know, the first TVs cost shit ton of money and it was yeah. only the richest people that were able to have it. But now everybody can have a huge flat screen in their, in their like in the Western world, right? at least um, not everybody, of course, um, but it's becoming more available. Absolutely. Um, so with the money also comes responsibility yeah and i think that that's exactly what we're seeing because you can have a lot of money and be famous and have that power yeah. and be fucking despised yeah absolutely. and hated yeah. jeff bezos is yeah. one of the best examples of yeah. this because people sit like it because that's the thing of like when you have it you are responsible yeah. of delivering back to the people it's yeah. like the people give you the the resources like hey you have the know-how and, and that to go do more yeah. You have more potential that you need to do. Right. And so, so you earn that in the start, or maybe you don't, maybe you cheat into that, right. which is not good either. Anyway, that's corruption Yeah, and scammers and all that. Anyway, but if you have somebody like Bezos, he, he has that like prestige, you know, in terms of like power and money or whatever, but people fucking despise him yeah. because he is not putting that to, to use in some places that people find meaningful. Right. It's like, you have all this power, use it for something good. Right. Where Elon Musk, he is a little bit more in the gray area because he is doing things and he's yeah. he is revolutionizing in some places that 
you know, he sped up the process for the electric cars, for rockets, you know, it's like solar energy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's like insane. Like, so that's why people give him like the status that he also has, but it also like the money. And some people are still, you know, it can be dangerous to put people on a pedestal, which is true. Um, Anyway, but he is at least using that, those resources and money to try to push it forward, like push us forward. And I think that that's exactly what it is. It's like the more money you get, you have that sort of more responsibility yeah, yeah. to the people. Otherwise the people will get mad at you. Absolutely. And again, it's, it's like a, um, often I find that those social groups that I've been around, they're very, uh, they don't think that way. They don't think about how their money affects other people. They think about like buying a nicer house or, you know, getting 1% more value on their stocks or whatever else. And it's, uh, um, Again, uh, no great crime was done out of necessity. It's all excess. It's like a, it's all pride. It always goes back to pride. And, um, and as it relates to me, is like I'm susceptible to being somebody who doesn't give back. Somebody that like um, doesn't necessarily choose meaning over uh, just having a lot of wealth and money. Because it's like I think, even though I do care a lot about drawing and painting, you could probably pay me money to stop drawing and painting. You know, yeah. and I don't know if that's a good thing. It's like. Um, that's me choosing again money over meaning it's like if you gave me a billion dollars right now i'd be like yeah <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> i would probably stop doing that and, yeah um i think that that most people also don't feel well, too ashamed I, I i i think i think it's just part of the human condition <laughs> yes, but yeah. it's like um if you gave me 10 million dollars i might be like yeah you know? <laughs> or you know i would seriously consider yeah seriously yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's um um you know there's a um like a sacrifice to who I am, a sacrifice. Like I spent years of my life studying art, you know, being in this world, and I'd essentially be giving up part of my life, you know, years of my life just for that money, you know. Yeah. And it's like a, um, again, uh, I think it's an okay decision to make, but I also think it's uh, important to know why you do things. It's important to know uh, exactly your intentions when you do pursue wealth, because like, um, do, do you know Sahil Lavinja? No. Uh, he's a founder of Gumroad. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, he, uh, he wrote an article about uh, uh, about Gumroad. It was like, I think the title of it was like, my failure at making $1 billion company. Or like, you know, he, when he was 16, was selling apps for like $100,000. When he was 19, he was like the second employee at Pinterest. And he was like, he funded Gumroad for like $10 million from like one of the co-founders of Facebook. And... Um, Gumroad like on, never reached even close to a billion dollars in value at the time and he wrote an article about, about how depressed he was that his company was only worth like X amount of millions of dollars you know and it's like he uh, um, again he wrote an article about this anyone listening can go read it but uh, was talking about how uh, in spite of making something that did help a lot of people, it was something he really did care about, it's meaningful. He felt like a loser because all of his other friends were Silicon Valley kids who were way more successful than him, you know, you know, getting defense contracts for a hundred million dollars or something. Like that. And um, again, it's like a uh, no matter who you are, you could be worth fifty trillion dollars and you could still feel like a loser, you know, and. Again, I think that's part of the dark side of me wanting the money is that I know for a fact, logically, or at least emotionally, it wouldn't solve any of my problems. And even knowing that logically, I would still look at it as like, ooh, nice. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, yeah. um, I could do a lot of fun things. I could, you know, go buy us Ferraris, you know, just, just for today and then, you know, give them away to people if I had a million dollars. Yeah. Um, again, it's like a... Um, yeah but it would send you somewhere else, somewhere where you never been before yeah yeah you know and i mean when i mean send you somewhere i mean like right yeah, internally it, 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 it would be in a area well i'm sure it, it must have been strange being at riot where again there's so much like it, it's a tech company it's a very successful tech company and i'm sure it, um like um Going to the campus is strange because there's, you know, 
pork belly for free every day and all this amazing food and all this amazing art everywhere. It's a beautiful campus and all this money there. And it's like a, um, you know, you could be somebody doing very well there and then there's somebody making 50 times more money than you. And it's like, and somebody making 50 times more money than that guy. You know? <laughs> it's like, um, uh, I, I'd imagine being in a place like that, it's hard not to feel self-conscious about, you know, your contribution or your, uh, yeah, well, I mean, you think about it. I think, I think that that's the thing with, with any sort of company is like, you know, are you adding value? Are you doing something? And and uh, I know that one of the mottos is like players first. Yeah, you know, like that's one of the things. Of like, hey, you know, like we're not serving us; we're serving the people you know that are yeah. that like what it is that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and I hope that that still becomes like the main pillar moving forward. I think sometimes, you know, we can lose vision and sight. Um, but I think as long as we stick to that, um, then that's good. I think for for us, for our own contributor and, and all that, it's like, you know, like it can be hard because you're, you're working in like an everyday sort of environment and you just go in and you do your thing and you struggle and whatever. And then you ship it, yeah. and then then you go back and you do the next thing. Yeah. But when you go to um, like um, Lightbox, for example, yeah. it was my first convention ever, right. and uh, seeing the impact that it had on people was really cool. Yeah. Like the oh, I really love this, you know. And you're like, and all of a sudden, you're just like, <gasps> oh, <yeah. laughs> you're like, I get to see it. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's this means something to. To, to people right and of course it doesn't mean something to everybody but right. for some people it, it 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 really means something or they printed it out or they had it as a desktop or that 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 that's cool yeah they're deciding to look at it every day yeah yeah, yeah. And, and that's a huge huge thing of like oh you know i i get to um i get to make a, a person like five ten percent like more happy and on that day or whatever like that's great yeah um, and when the when the financial stuff comes in, that's always super hard, you know, because then it's like, how much is your contribution worth? What are you getting in terms of? It's not only money, but it's also like other things that are just like so. It's tricky. It's tricky. I think. Um, I think. I think you're in a good spot. As an artist. If you keep putting your main focus on mastery, yeah. right. um, and what I mean by that is like focusing on the craft. Yeah. So you're like you want to keep getting better. You go into being the fool right. over and over again. You share the things that you find, right. um, and then hopefully people can support you, so that you can go into the unknown again. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you can make that trip or if it will be too dangerous. Right. So you can take bigger and bigger risks, come back with potentially bigger and bigger things yeah. that helps other people. Um, um, I forgot where, where I was going with this, but um, so if you if you keep your your sight on the mastery, it kind of it becomes like this sort of Thing that never ends yeah right of like and and once you do that and you know that you'll never read it reach an end point yeah then you just keep going and it doesn't become about like you know the compensation or something like that that's like a negotiation that you'll have to talk with whoever hires you or if you hire yourself or something it's like you want to that's a balance right? yeah. and that's a whole talk about negotiation which is in itself extremely fucking hard right um so an artist we're often not very good at negotiating yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh undervaluing yourself and... yeah and there's self-doubt and we're very um agreeable too most of the time you know and um so we're not very great at that part um but it's it's tricky um it's it's a balance i think yeah um so I think if, if if you keep your eyes on mastery, having having as much fun as you can, yeah. sometimes it's gonna fucking suck. It's just a, just the reality of it. 
Um, and then as you go forward doing something that's meaningful, I think that's the thing that again, like is like, do you want to tell a story? Go fucking tell it. That's that's a thing for myself. That's for a future Espen. Um, um, or anybody else, like if they have like a comic or something, you know, like however they want to tell it, like go do it, you yeah. know. Yeah, just try it out. Just try it out. Yeah. So and there, there are no rules. Yeah, exactly. I know. I uh, when I look at something like League of Legends, it started out as Warcraft three mod. It's, yeah. It's, it's can't take it too seriously, you know. <laughs> no, no. I'm... And that started out as like Chris Metzen in his room, just drawing you know, fucking nonsense and stuff. And, yeah, and it started, and Blizzard started out of a garage, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'm gonna make sure this is still. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not so well, you know, and I, I think it's um, again, um, it always goes back to the idea that everything relates to everything else. Where um, the simplest things that you might not take too serious in your life, you know, you might think that you're a loser, or you know, if you're you know, in any way, and you know, oh, what I'm doing doesn't matter. But then you think about the domino effects. Everything leads to like everything else in humanity had to, like, we had to figure out, you know water and polio and all these other things before warcraft could exist before riot could exist and it's like we had to figure out like how to build a sidewalk before we can build league of legends you know and it's like how to build street lamps and it's like a um you know if you feel like your contribution to society doesn't matter it's like your thing that you're making no matter who you are does contribute to uh people being on Mars, you know, or mm -hmm. us being like an intergalactic species or something, you know, yeah. it's like cleaning toilets does that, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem obvious in the moment when you're doing the thing because, you know, you're so caught up in the act of doing it. You know? yeah. Totally. Um, and, and then the question comes in sometimes when we ask ourselves, like, is it good or bad, you know? Yeah. And I have, I had a period of time when, during uh, my time at, at, at uh, my former employee, where I asked like I asked that question of like is is what it is what I'm doing good or bad you know yeah. is this contributing in a good or bad way like, it's both yeah <laughs> it's like, to a certain degree yeah, yeah, yeah to a certain like, degree it's both it's like it gives a lot of people really a lot of joy it gives them a place where they can escape like a busy you know yeah. life or whatever and. You know, as a kid, I found a lot of um, peace in, in video games often, you know, and fun and yeah. learned a lot of things too. And of course, it also has a dark side of like, it can become too much, yeah. you know, like it can spiral out of control and for individual and they can get completely lost in it. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that it should, shouldn't exist or it should Absolutely. be banned or something. It's like... It's like, where's that dose and balance for the person? Well, um, and it's the reality of it is that people have free will. And like the dark side of League of Riot specifically is that people spend $30,000 a year on skins. You know, like there are people that probably do that. I don't, I don't, I don't even know if, so, you know, if there are even $30,000 <laughs> in skins. But, I, you know, but yeah, but like I think that it's, it's like it, it, I think it comes into the situation of the person too. Yeah. Because if the, if the person, Right. is struggling financially right. that's not a good thing yeah. right it's like man that money should go different like to a different place if let's say let's say if it's a kid or you know elon Musk, yeah, yeah. probably fine yeah, yeah probably, <laughs> like, probably okay yeah if that makes them feel good and they have like a cool skin in game go for it yeah it's all individually based and, and there's nothing that you can do as a person that's making it to do anything about it you know and to, mm -hmm. and to even think about Oh, I'm evil for enabling this is a mistake. You know, it's like a. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, there are people that probably have spent like a hundred thousand hours, or like, you know, a hundred thousand hours playing League of Legends. Yeah, it's like a. Is that good or bad? I don't know. You know. Yeah, it's can't, like, can't make a can't make a value judgment. It's not my life. You know? it, yeah, and it depends on the situation. That's the thing too. Of like, I probably spend way over. Two hundred hours. Two hundred thousand dollars or something. Yeah, I don't even know. Maybe two thousand. I don't know. A lot of hours went into video games. Yeah, yeah. Was that good or bad? I played a lot of World of Warcraft, man. Same. <laughs> yeah, same. yeah. I played an absurd amount. 
So, you know, like I gained a lot from it. Like I learned a lot of things about the market uh, from the auction plays in, yeah. in fucking World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a shit ton of English yeah. from World of Warcraft too yeah. because everybody was speaking English. Absolutely. And I had to learn. I had in school around that time too. It was like I had to learn to write it and it became like yeah. one of the biggest factors of learning English. Yeah. Because now I wanted to. I saw it like it like had an implication for it. Um, so is that good or bad? Both. Like yeah. there's been times where it's been excessive, where I've played too much to run away from something. Yeah. But it's also like it's up to you of like, but you know too when you're doing it because yeah. you feel shitty and yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you also like there's some responsibility on the individual too to to not just say like, oh, this made me do it. It's like no. It's like. Yes, this has things that you know um, can be can be a strong gravitational pull, but you also have a say in it. Yeah. And for some things, you know, like some things that are truly like such a drug that you have no say in, like heroin. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cocaine. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Cigarettes. Yeah. Super, super. Yeah. Anyway, and maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll look back in the in the in the future and we'll be like, "Fuck, this is like banned now, or whatever." Yeah. It's hard to say. Um, well, I, I heard somebody describe that the way we spend time on our phones is going to be the same way. We're going to look at the, that the same way we look at cigarettes now. Where it's like, you know, sometimes I have like four hours of screen time a day on like or more on my phone. Yeah. Just like looking at Instagram or YouTube or something. And it's yeah. like, you know, that's like not good, you know? It's, yeah. And it's like in the same way that we look at like, you know, people from the 50s smoking cigarettes, like they, instead of breathing, they were just puffing, puffing away like two packs a day. It's yeah. like, it's not good either, but just the, you know, it's there yeah, it's at there. that time, and then we 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 find the, the negatives of it, and we chose to go a different way. Yeah, it's hard to say, and who gets to be the judge of what you can and cannot do, and it's tricky. It's I don't know. It's definitely not my place to say. Oh well, yeah, and it's uh it, again, it's like everything could be good and bad. Where even eating healthy could be a bad thing. Where you're like, you know, um. I'm going to eat healthy to the point where it destroys my mental health. It's yeah. like, I'm not going to, even though I really want this thing, this candy, I'm going to hurt myself. And if I do do it, I'm going to punish myself for, you know, um, or you could be like, you could punish other people for, you know, eating the candy bar instead of a eating smoothie or something. You know? Totally. And that's not for me either, you know? Yeah. So, so whether or not it's good or bad, it's both. Um, and, I think that's the thing too with our art is like or any invention is like not maybe not any invention but most inventions like you can't control oh, yeah. how it will be interacted with or how people will interpret it like right. the same with your words it's like you can't control how I'm gonna perceive right. it's like no it's like you say something because you're like this you see is true or maybe at the point you see that's true or this is where you think or it's like an undefined thought or whatever you're figuring it out as you go and you can't control it you know the world and people are vastly different that, that it will be perceived and interpreted in so many different ways absolutely so well i think uh the guy who invented dynamite said that he made it for created it to mine and then it's obviously used to explode people. You know? yeah. It's like, oh, dang. He's like, bummed out about that. You know? Yeah. I so, mean, the S bomb too, right? That's a big one to have in your conscience. Dude, I, I, uh, my friend's grandfather worked on the Manhattan Project. Oh, were you? And I, I, I talked to him. I recorded a conversation with him that I haven't released publicly, but he worked on the fucking Manhattan Project, you know? Yeah. And talking to him about it, or he worked on just atom bombs in general. Talking to him about it, he's, he, like, he struggles with it eth ethically, you know? Yeah. It's like a, what do you do about that? <laughs> You're creating this this thing that's like, um, very strange. Yeah. It's like, uh, speaking of just existential crises, it's like somebody has the power. There are atom bombs in the world, and somebody has their finger on the button. You know, yeah. somewhere right now. It's like, yeah. Bizarre. It is. So maybe there is a line, right? Maybe there is a line where. Where we where where we can say like okay that's we're wrong with yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah yeah but that's good to have um that's crazy though yeah that that you got to have that talk weird it's weird fucking talking to again uh there are people that can exist and live perfectly validating lives and they created the fucking atom bomb you know yeah. people that are you know but you know. just to play the devil's advocate here maybe it also added some good 
I think it did. Maybe because yeah. now we're at a point where at the put push your button, we can eradicate the world. I'll push your button if you push me. Exactly. Yeah. It's like so it's like sure I'll push mine. And that power is also like it needs to be respected, which yeah. luckily and thankfully yeah. people did. It was yeah. fucking close that we didn't, but um we acknowledge that, that power is there and it's too much power for our own good. Absolutely. So it puts like a stopper because there's an arm race, arms race up to that point. Yeah. Now we he engaged in war in different ways with like cyber war and yeah. space war and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, very confusing. Super confusing. Yeah, I just want to paint pictures and <laughs> live in a van and focus on you a very and simple life. I mean, yeah, yeah. Focus on you and you can change the world, but you can create a. I think that's Dave Chappelle. But you can create a nice little corner. Of yeah, it. absolutely. I like that quote. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. Um, I think we've been going for two hours and twenty minutes. I need to. Go to the bathroom. Okay, cool. <laughs> do you want to go to the bathroom and then we can talk about wrapping it up? Let's do it. Sounds good. Oh. Can you do that to them, No, they want to announce you to go on. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Just that uh, this is just like the visual observation sketch program, just like go. Don't like think too much and just like just do it. Yeah, yeah. use ink so you can't like do any erase anything. Totally. Yes, yeah. and just having fun, yeah. right? It's like exploration of it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think. Uh, well, when I look at drawing, it's like such a um, a simple thing. I, like everyone can fucking draw, you know. Yeah. And it's like when sometimes when I look at beginners draw, I'm like really impressed by it. It's like wow, that's really cool, actually. You know, it's like people that are completely just crush out of it mm. children's yeah. drawings are the best oh yeah. yeah yeah like pure fantasy yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. like this monster has 16 arms <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, yeah. why but, but why i don't know like yeah. it's, that's, it's just how it is yeah. exactly have you ever read the uh, axe cup no oh man oh, i've heard of axe uh, yeah. so it's basically a comic artist that uh, i can't remember if it's his son or his like cousin or something like that he's like five yeah. Basically went to him, like asked him to tell a story okay. that then turned into a comic that's called a Axe Cup. And the writer is like a five year old. He <laughs> like writes everything down he says. Yeah. And it's just like the comics are like madness. Because like <laughs> nothing, other than like the main character, nothing is like actually put together but, but, because but, he's just like going. Yeah. You know? but, but, but it's done professionally. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, he draws, yeah. he writes right. everything down, he says, and then he draws out from it <laughs> yeah, afterwards yeah. and tries to like couple some things together. But otherwise, there's like no, you know, continuous story. Uh, story. It's like each um, new comic is its like own thing because it's like so random, all of it. Totally. But it's super cool, like that, like idea that he um, that he went for. Yeah, I it. love that. Nobody did that before? No. Fuck yeah. yeah that's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. That's it is. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's also good. just like a cup with an axe. Why? <laughs> <laughs> badass. That's why. Badass. Fuck yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't know if League of Legends characters are much more complicated than that too. It's like a not the new ones are, but the old ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock guy. Yeah. <laughs> Froze rocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Muscle dude. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's something uh, really nice to the childish charm. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, or, or like the old uh, Avengers comics too. Those yeah. are charming. Yeah. yeah. Jack yeah. Kirby and stuff. Just like the interview with them where I think they're at Comic Con where he's there with, with his uh, son slash nephew or whatever it is, where they actually just make a new episode on stage. He just asks him, like, so what's Axe Cops doing these days? And he just like, <laughs> <starts away>. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. awesome. That's hilarious. Uh, it's so cool. Like also, if you're a kid, uh, yeah, yeah. and you just like you're allowed for that space. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I'd love yeah. to do a, a YouTube video like that. Yeah, like, get a kid and then actually get like professional artists to do some cool fucking you know, art associated. Mm, I love that. Yeah, that'd be fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, let's uh let's wrap it up and then okay. go get some uh go get some Danish food. Yes. Uh, yeah. Again, thanks again for doing this, man. I really enjoyed our conversation.
Fabulous. Yeah. It, we went places that I didn't expect. <laughs> right, so that's the best. It gets weird. I, I want to make it weird. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's really good. Um, so anyway, thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, uh, how should people follow you? And, uh, is there um, anything that you would like to tell my millions of viewers? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those who are uh, stuck with us to the end here, uh, if you're interested in you know, following the journey, uh, you can follow me on Esmond Lesh on Instagram, YouTube, yeah. Um, the interwebs. Nice. And uh, hopefully, there's going to be some more sharing of knowledge coming on in the future. And also some uh, some personal projects with uh, what I shared today. Nice. Cool. Coming in the future. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. And then get in here, Heinrich. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been here the entire time. <laughs> cool. Okay. Cool. I guess that's all good. Thank you so much. Thank again. you.